In this demo, we are going to show two ROS2 data spaces hosted by two geographically separate local area networks communicating over the Internet. In the first data space, we have a ROS2 node publishing a twist type message, while on the receiving side we have two subscriptors in the form of a standard ROS2 node and a micro ROS node. We make use of several distinct technologies, all developed and made available by Aproxima. First of all, we have FastDDS, which is the default middleware of ROS2, in charge of communicating the two separate ROS2 data spaces in each LAN. Then we have Integration Service, a tool to intercommunicate protocols with DDS. In each LAN, we launch an Integration Service instance that acts as a WAN gateway over FastDDS TCP communication capabilities. This allows the two ROS2 data spaces to be put into communication, notwithstanding their logical separation into two distinct subnets. Finally, there is MicroROS, that is, a robot operating system which enables ROS2 nodes to be brought into microcontrollers. Integration service functions by means of system handles, which enable external protocols to be communicated with FastDDS. And in this case, we leverage the already existing system handle that communicates ROS2 with integration service. All the ingredients within this world can be configured by means of a YAML file. In this video, we'll be showing a remote call between two of our engineers, each in charge of a ROS2 LAN. The first engineer, shown on the left, is the one publishing the twist topic through the WAN, and the second one, shown on the right, is the one receiving it. The first opens a join node that is in charge of obtaining the data from a gamepad. Then, he opens a teleoperation twist joy in charge of converting the controller data to a twist topic. Finally, he launches an integration service instance in charge of translating the message to one understandable by FastDDS and tunneling it through the WAN. We now switch to the data space handled by the second engineer. On the top left side, we can see him turning on a Kobuki robot operating by a micro ROS board. This micro ROS node is communicated with the ROS2 data space via a micro ROS agent, allowing it to subscribe to the twist topic and move the robot accordingly. Now he's executing a turtle sim node, which also subscribes to the twist topic and is in charge of displacing the virtual turtle in its standard graphical interface. Finally, he opens an integration service instance, which instantaneously connects via WAN with the instance launched by the first engineer. As a consequence, you can see how both the Kobuki robot and the turtle sim are moving, operated by the gamepad controlled by the first engineer. 